Logic Pro for iPad 2 has added something cool, a chord track. And it's not just for show. It can help your session musicians play some cool chord progressions. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use it. Let's go. Yes, the chords track has been added as one of the global tracks here in Logic Pro for iPad. To view your global tracks, you can hit this drop down here and you'll notice things have changed a little bit here. Let's explain. You'll see here that only one of these global tracks is displayed, in this case, the chord track. To change that one, we tap and we can change that to the marker, time signature, key signature, or tempo and view those one at a time. Or like in the previous version, we can tap the three dots here, go into customize global tracks, and instead of showing a single track we can turn that off and we can show as many of these as we want and they'll all show up here in our global tracks toolbar so to ensure we have the chords track visible all we need to do is hit the drop down here if this isn't on chord you can change it to the chords track or go in and adjust it to make sure you're showing the chords track here in logic pro to add a chord to the global track you guessed it we hit the plus button here and that will add our first chord now by default it will give you the root chord of the key signature you're in in this case c major we can adjust this though let's go through that now to change the chord we can either type the letter in here so let's say e and then tap out and that will change the root note or you can hit the root note here and change it by using the menu. Below the root note here are all the different types of chords. We've got minor, we've got sustain two and four, we've got augmented and we've got diminished. We can also add sevenths, ninths, elevenths, thirteenths, all of the different types of chords. This video is not really going to be a theory lesson, but if you want to learn more about that, plenty of places online you can do it. But just know that whatever chord you want, this has got you covered. Let's go with a G, but let's make it a G major seventh, just so we can see how this goes. Next one, we've got the bass note. So you can actually have a different bass note to the chord. And this comes in handy when you start changing chords you for your different instruments. And I'll show you how to do that in this video as well. So you can change the bass note. You can even change the scale used. Yeah, you've got the major, the double harmonic, harmonic major, don't stress out too much if you don't know what any of this means. You can just keep it simple, but all the options are there if you need them. Oh, and yes, as you can see down the bottom here, if you want to play in your chords, you can do it using MIDI input. If you tap on that one, you can actually hit your keys on your keyboard and it will recognize the chords. I'm going to show that in more detail in future videos, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Once you're happy with the chord, you can simply tap out and you can see that chord has now been added for this entire region. To add another chord, we simply put the playhead here to the position we want to add it and hit the plus button again. This time I want an F chord, so I'll hit the root note here, tap on F and I'm done. And one more chord, let's bring it back to C by tapping here and tapping the plus button again. There's our C, tap off and now we have a progression here. We go from the G major 7 down through an F and into a C. Let's take a listen to this chord progression. Not bad, but I don't want that C as my bass note in the first chord, so we need to edit it. To do that, if we tap, tap again, we've got no edit option because first we need to ungroup the chords by tapping ungroup chords. Now we can tap on the chord and then tap on edit chord. And if we want to remove that bass note, we can just tap there and let's make the bass note back to our G. And now we've just got a straight G major seven. Let's take a listen. much better. As well as manually adding in chords, we can use chord progressions. In this case, we need to regroup these chords first. So we're going to tap on the multi-select, select all three of these, go back to trim mode, tap, tap again, and tap group chords. If you hadn't separated them out, it would already be grouped like this. Now what we can do is tap on the chords track, tap again, and then hover over chord progressions. We can choose any of these progressions. If you know about chords, you'll know these, that the lower case are your minors and the upper case are your majors. So this is a two minor, a five major, back to a one major. Let's try this one by tapping. And you can see there that it's changed up this progression. It's gonna go D D minor, G, and then back to C, D minor, G, C across our eight bars. Let's hit play and take a listen.
That sounds pretty cool. To change the chord progression, no problem. Just tap, go to chord progressions, update it to a new one, and there you go. It's changed it up to something new. We can also edit chords using trim and copy and paste, but to do that, we first need to tap, tap again, and ungroup these chords. Now we can tap outside so that we've not selected any of these and tap back on a chord. We can now use these trim handles to move the start and the end spot for each chord. So if, for instance, we wanted this C chord to go all the way over the first two bars, we just grab the handle, drag to the right and release. And there you go. We've changed that. Same with the A minor. We can drag that across like so. We can also use copy and paste. Let's show that. Let's say instead of this A minor, we want it to be the C again. We can tap the C, tap and copy. And then if we tap on the A minor, we need to bring our playhead to the start of that one, tap in here and hit the paste button. And there you go. It's going to overwrite it with that C chord. We also have the option to double or halve the rhythm of a chord in the chord track. If we tap on a chord, for instance, and go double the chord rhythm, you can see it adds another chord in there that we can then play around with. If we wanted to halve it, we hit the halve button and it goes back to the way it was. And we can also click and drag different chords around. So if we want to move this A minor over here, we can drop that there and you'll see it goes back to a default, which is whatever the root chord is there. If we want to fill that gap, we can just move that one over or we can move another chord and drop it in there. So it's very simple and intuitive once you get the hang of how chords work here in Logic Pro for iPad. A final tip, a quick way to erase all the chords you have is just to grab your first chord, put it through all the region, and then it's going to give you that same chord there. And then you can go in and add different chord progressions back in to change it up. There's another place here in Logic Pro for iPad 2 that has a chords track, and that's our Session Player Regions. Yes, if you're using the drummer, the bass, or the keyboards, you've got a chords track here. If you want to learn how to create using those, there's three entire deep dive videos. They're linked in the description. You can check those out afterwards. To access the chord tracks here in the Session Players, we simply go to this third button along here, and you can see all of the note information information, but at the moment, it doesn't have any chords. There's a few options which we're going to go through now. To add chords to the chords track here in our region, we need to first hit the plus button here to go into add mode. Now we can tap down here in the region and we'll get this. It says when you add chords to a session player region, the region follows the region chords instead of the chords track. You can set the region to follow the chord track again at any time. We're happy with that. Let's hit continue. And now you can see we have a very similar layout here where we can actually add in chords and change them up. The key thing to remember here, though, is to make sure if you're moving things to go back into your edit mode so that you can move the handles and move these around. It's only when you're adding in chords that you want to be in that add mode. To edit your chord here, all you need to do is select it, tap again, and hit edit chord. And you have this very similar, in fact, it's exactly the same layout as you have with your global track chords. So you just come in here, select which chord you would like to change it to and tap out. And there you go. You've changed the chords and you can have them separate to the overall global chords. However, more often than not, you'll want your regions here in the session players to actually match what you've got in your global chords. So let's show you how to do that now. Let's tap on the first option here to go back to this view here. We're going to tap on the region and scroll on down until we get to the chords menu. You can see there that we've currently got follow region chords selected. If we want to go back to the global track, we simply select follow global chord track and you'll see there that it's removed those. And now when we go back to our chords view, there's nothing there. It's now going to follow our global chords again. What if we want some slight variation though? Let's say we wanted our bass to have a different root note, but play the same chords. Well, we can do that too. And it's pretty simple. Let's tap on this bass, tap again, scroll on down to chords. And what we can actually do is we can paste the chord from the global track. Let's tap on that one and check that out. We can now see that it's pasted in those from our global track. Now, the reason you want to paste it and not just follow it is now we can edit these chords to make some tweaks. To do that, you're probably ahead of me. We go back into the chords mode here. If you wanted to add chords, remember you go to your add mode, but we just want to edit. So we're going to stay in move. And let's just say that when this moves from C to G, we want the bass note to remain on the C for this bass. All we need to is tap, tap again, and go to edit chord. And under the bass note here, we're going to tap on that one and make the bass note a C. 
tap out and there we go. You can now see that we have a slight variation on the chords here on our region for our bass player than we do for the overall global chords. And yes, you can do it the other way as well. Let's say you've set all the chords in one region and you want to tell Logic Pro for iPad to add those to the global chord track. Well, all you need to do is tap, tap again. And once again, under the chords menu here, we want to paste the region chords to the global track. Let's hit it. And there you go, it's updated that second chord with the edited chord that we have here. So whichever way you do it, going from global to region or region to global, you've got options here to get it right. And if you've added in chords and you've made a complete mess of it, don't worry, there's an easy way to get rid of them. Just tap and hit the delete button. That's going to remove and go back to just your root note there. From there, you can add in chords manually. You can use chord progressions. You can do all the things we've shown in this video. There you have it, everything you need to get started using the cool new Global Chords Track and Region Chords Tracks right here in Logic Pro for iPad 2. If you'd like to learn a heap more about creating, recording and releasing your best music and all the new features of Logic Pro for iPad, check out the other videos in the description.